The presentation content today is since you're not most people that might be viewing this are not coming from a, an electrical or physics background. So I wanted to briefly touch on electromagnetic spectrum, but I promise to do it without any equations. I'm going to discuss uh, a very brief amount of CST history. Uh, and I think that's important to know that this is not the new kid on the block. They, they literally are one of the first champions that come up with numerical algorithms. Then we'll go into the main part of the presentation, and that is CST Studio Suite DC to Daylight Champion. This will go through as best as I can in the amount of time we have uh, all the features that are in CST. Um, then we'll move over into integration with SOLIDWORKS, which I believe that the integration of CST and SOLIDWORKS is a true market disruption. I think this is really going to change the market, and I'll describe why. Then we'll go into key technologies and industries. Uh, this might be a little bit easier to think about because I think most of us know what uh, industry you're in. And then I've organized that by each one of those industries. What are some te technologies that you might use CST for in each one of those? And then last, we'll, we'll summarize with just the benefits of EM simulation. Okay. Starting with guitar strings, have you ever strummed a guitar string and noticed the standing waves? If your answer is yes, well, you just passed this physics course. Standing waves are the basis of our communication system, but instead of compressed air molecules, we are exciting an oscillating electromagnetic wave. Moving into the spectrum. So we all grew up with the radio with manual dials that were tuning to different frequencies on the dashboard of our parents' car. So we knew there was this invisible energy bouncing around us. Less often, we think about the optical frequencies as part of the EM spectrum. And even less do we associate the infrared heat as part of the EM spectrum. I promise no equations, but I would be amiss not to mention Maxwell's equations, which can be combined to form what is known as the wave equation representing the electric and magnetic waves simultaneously, which we call electromagnetic. These equations can be solved in both integral form and differential form, as well as time domain and frequency domain. Brief history of CST, not the new kid. 1977. Um, University of Darmstadt Dean of Physics Thomas Weiland invented the numerical finite integration technique. In 1992, the formation of computer simulation technology, or CST, with his star student Peter Toma as the director of technology, and Peter expanded the FIT technique with curved boundaries and, th and thin sheets. In 1999 was the first release of CST Microwave Studio. 2008, jumping ahead, they had developed so much in CST that it now had multiple physics solvers, so they changed the name to CST Studio Suite. In 2016, they were acquired by Dassault Systems, and at that time, CST had 300 employees worldwide with over 100 PhD numerical physicists. That is a lot of brain power. Uh, that continues to this day. They still have their same development team. 2018, new license configuration uh, by Dassault, where they decided to combine pretty much every feature that's in CST as the standard software suite. Um, so in the past, you'd have to buy each solver independently. When it was owned by CST, Dassault did a pretty remarkable position of, you know what, we're just going to bring everything together. So everything that I present today is in the standard software suite of CST. Uh, the only exceptions would be any mention of GPU and any, uh, uh, any mention of the EDA token import. But otherwise, everything you see is part of the standard license. And this year, CST Studio Suite has been expanded to the 3D experience with OnCloud with even more integration with SOLIDWORKS. The DC to daylight champion. Okay, what does this mean? So, you know, looking at these frequencies, you know, static, static and DC means the same thing. DC is direct current. Um, so we can look at, you know, the, 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 the electromagnetic equations can be written in the form of both static, low frequency and high frequency, 
which historically is a different market solution for each one of these bands. This is what separates CST. In a single interface, the complete EM spectrum is represented from DC to daylight in both time domain and in frequency domain, and includes multiphysics in both thermal, fluid dynamics, and first order structural effects. The base package of CST Studio Suite covers all these design modules that you see, uh, from static to high frequency, PCB simulation, multiphysics, as well as circuit simulation. But let's start off with a high frequency subset of solvers, the Microwave Studio flagship. It, it took a lot to get all these solvers in here, but, but you know, before we start discussing the types of structures that qualify as high frequency, I first want to cover the numerical solvers in Microwave Studio. Under the full wave equation solvers and volumetric mesh, we have two time domain solvers, the FIT technique, as well as something called the transmission line method. The frequency domain solver is a, a finite element method and an eigenmate solver. All these are full wave equation solvers. Also under full wave equation, but surface mesh, we have the integral solver and the multi-layer solver, both using a form of method of moments. And lastly, we have the asymptotic solver, also under surface meshing that uses a ray tracing, ray bouncing, and physical optics solver. All these solvers are inside Microwave Studio. Just a quick slide over meshing. What did I mean by these meshing? So you have a non-hex non-uniform hexahedral mesh, there's a tetrahedral mesh, and then surface meshing. The two general solvers that utilize 3D meshing and provide S parameters are the time domain and frequency domain, where the time domain includes the default FIT approach, but can be switched to transmission line method for specific applications. Some of the key differences of time domain and frequency domain our time domain simulates a broad broadband of frequency in a single simulation where the frequency evaluates a single frequency at a time. The time domain uses a time marching scheme to solve the unknowns where the frequency domain must conduct a matrix inversion for the unknowns. The time domain is capable of electrically very large mesh where the frequency domain is more in the small to medium mesh size due to that matrix inversion. Meshing technique in the time domain is very effective for uh, complex imports, which is more difficult for the meshing approach that's in the frequency domain. And time domain can slow down with high Q structures where the frequency domain simulates high Q very quickly. Last, going into hardware acceleration, the time domain is written to take advantage of GPUs, where the frequency domain is written more for taking advantage of high number of cores. This graph shows the relationship of electrical volume or mesh size to a typical solve time in both time domain and frequency domain. The big takeaway is that the time domain is more efficient and with memory usage and, and can be quicker for larger solve volumes. The other four solvers in the high frequency suite can be referred to as special purpose solvers. The integral and asymptotic solvers are for electrically very large structures. The eigenmode solver is used for studying 3D resonant structures or their eigenmodes. And the multilayer solver is a planar method of moment solver that can be very effective for PCB simulations. Technology examples for high frequency include, but definitely not limited to, uh, aerospace applications like EMI shielding and radar cross-section, component design like cavity filters, antenna design and wireless coupling models, and PCB design for signal integrity analysis. Moving into the next suite is CST EM Studio. At the forefront of low frequency design are electric motors, especially with the research and electric drive automotive industry, as well as the electric genera generator design for water or wind turbine. CST Studio Suite includes low frequency solvers, as well as another product called Opera, uh, which CST purchased for advanced material studies. Biomedical and life science research also utilizes the low frequency and magnet, magnet design software. 
CST includes a bio model library and can also import third party voxel data sets, which opens the ability for life science studies in the EM spectrum and thermal dynamics. CST Particle Studio. Few people know that CST's origin by Thomas Violin was not to solve Maxwell's equations for wireless design, PCB simulation, or motor design, but was to assist in designing the world's most advanced particle super colliders. And Particle Studio is a unique set of solvers rarely found in the marketplace. Examples of design examples include both the electron gun as well as a magnetron. CST Multiphysics Studio. The conjugate heat transfer solver employs computational fluid dynamics to simulate thermal, conduction, convection, and radiation simultaneously in the both transient and steady state regime. The solver can also be used with a GPU for larger simulation models. In this example, we're looking at uh, the top down view of a, a large board with uh, what happens if you change both the fan speed and fan location and the overall effects of cooling. Cable Studio, CST Cable Studio. Cable Studio allows an engineer to create or import complicated cable routing, which can be used in the automotive, naval, or commercial environments. There is a library of cable harnesses, transitions, and shielding op options. And simulation results include both S parameters as well as near fields and radiation emission. CST PCB Studio. PCB Studio can import complex board designs from Cadence, Mentor, and general file formats. Whoops, where'd it go? And general for file formats, including OBD. After the user establishes the net, several types of simulations can be for, uh, performed, including IR drop, power analysis, time domain or frequency domain, as well as thermal. The voltage IR drop can be exported as a heat source to the co simulation thermal solver. Signal integrity results include both S parameters or transit results and the like. Let me go back to that slide. And signal integrity results include both S parameters, transient, and I diagrams. And lastly, PCBs have FCC requirements for radiation emission, which CST provides along with a detailed study of 3D fields. All right, CST board check. Board check is built into PCB Studio and allows for imported boards to be evaluated on industry standard netlist routing rules. Uh, so this can be very valuable to bring it in. It can tell you if netlist or if any kind of traces are going over a via pad or uh, too close to an edge of a ground plane, et cetera. So it checks a whole board for you. This was originally developed by IBM. And lastly, CST Design Studio. The schematic design tool uses a SPICE netlist format for system level simulation. For system level simulation and analytical measure based models, customized libraries of linear and nonlinear components, components, including IBIS models and integration to 3D EM simulation projects. So in this image we see here, we have multiple 3D EM simulation models uh, that are connected with both microstrip models, discrete components, uh, for an overall system analysis. Also included is the system assembly and modeling or SAM allows for engineers to allows the engineers to compare the results of different solvers, model configurations in a single simulation project and perform post-processing automatically. In this example, we've got an MRI birdcage model and the user can pick and match what target they want to put inside the MRI Birdcage. Integration with SOLIDWORKS. 
Dassault Systems has created a seamless geometry link between CST Studio Suite and SOLIDWORKS, saving engineers design time, reducing errors through redundant importing and exporting. When opening SOLIDWORKS file in CST, the engineer has the option to select the geometry parameters to import or link over. These parameters control the geometry in CST while updating the SOLIDWORKS file in real time. So on the left-hand screen, we can see the, the, the live link image of, of what it looks like when you're in CST in the modeler to bring in a SOLIDWORKS file. And on the right-hand side, we can see both SOLIDWORKS as well as the CST model fully parameterized. Seamless integration from the mechanical layout team with the electrical team allows for parametric and optimization studies in CST while operating from a native SOLIDWORKS file. Here we can see I ran a parametric sweep on one of the antenna links that was uh, linked over from the SOLIDWORKS file as well ran an optimization to tune that antenna to a certain frequency. The table describing the current manner of mechanical teams collaborating with electrical teams is literally no exaggeration, particularly for someone who's been in this industry so long and also ran my own service company for so long. So step number one, you know, the housing for let's say an antenna or a PCB is created in SOLIDWORKS. Step two, model is exported to the general format for the EM solver. Step three, model is now imported into the EM solver. Step four, model errors are corrected and healed inside the EM solver. And this includes gaps or rounding errors from an importation. Step five, sections of the geometry are recreated for parametric and optimization. Step six, model is optimized. Step seven, model is now exported to a general format for SOLIDWORKS. Step eight, model is imported into SOLIDWORKS. Step nine, original exported file by the SOLIDWORKS engineer is compared to the new file for geometry changes. And this is where most errors happen. Step 10. The new SOLIDWORKS file is created based on the interpretation of changes. And step 11, to confirm interpretation of changes, exports the SOLIDWORKS file again. Step 12, model is imported into EM simulation software again. Step 13, errors corrected and healed. Step 14, EM simulation one more time to confirm, confirm correct geometry changes. And step 15, either you have success or you don't. If the results do not compare, now you have to go back and repeat steps 9 through 14. This is what happens every day with design teams all over the world. If we look on the left-hand side, what has to be done now between SOLIDWORKS and CST? Same steps as steps 1, 2, and 3 before. Housing for antenna or PCB created in SOLIDWORKS. Except now, step 2, CST opens native SOLIDWORKS file with predefined parameters by the SOLIDWORKS engineer. Three, model is optimized in the native SOLIDWORKS file. This approach, the previous approach or existing approach that's been in place is costly in both time and resources and riddled with opportunities for error. This is the market disruption I speak of. The integration of CST with SOLIDWORKS will expand the creative output of your design teams while drastically reducing errors. Key technologies and industries. You might recognize a few. In the aerospace industry, so we have installed antenna performance, general antenna design, lightning strike on aerospace planes and satellites, radar design, other examples include environmental EM effects or co-site interference. Moving into transportation and mobility. Antenna install performance also is very applicable here, as well as the cable harness designs we discussed earlier. Automotive radar, we're seeing a lot of this in the industry right now, both in automation as well as safety features. And generators and motors. Moving into energy and materials, high voltage components, transformer design, 
and also generator and motors are included in, in energy and materials as well. Industrial equipment, RFID design, wireless connectivity. In this example, this is the asymptotic solver that's looking at a 5G coverage pattern in a warehouse. So what we're seeing a lot in 5G design is actually computer automation, uh, particularly in warehouses and dockyards and things like that. Uh, so there's a lot of simulation analysis going into connectivity and those environments. We can still see that the, the motor design is always important. There's so many industries motor design is involved in, as well as actuators. And in this example, cosine interference. This is a automated tractor with multiple antennas on it. And there's an analysis where you can see that uh, the multiple antennas are not coupling to each other. And uh, that's called cosine interference. Life sciences, MRI, implant safety, wearable devices, uh, RF dithermy, and x-ray tubes. High tech or consumer electronics, we've got antenna performance, particularly when it comes to the loading of the body. Um, this is also very, very common, both with both cell phones as well as earbuds or any kind of wearable devices. Uh, microwave components, uh, electromagnetic compatibility. So that's what EMC stands for, or electromagnetic interference is what EMI stands for. Signal and power integrity for PCBs, uh, touch screen design, and also cable design. The benefits of EM simulation. First, improve product quality by evaluating a wide field of simulation space. So this is the opportunity you can look at things in both time domain, you could look at uh, transient analysis, you can look at frequency domain, you can look at thermal, fluid, and even structure. Also enhance understanding of physical devices. Uh, with EM simulation, engineers can view and study fields uh, and get possible insights that they would not have before. A lot of the times the fields that we're viewing in simulation software are things you couldn't even measure in real life. That would be very difficult to measure. Reduce risk. So by evaluating the design before physical prototypes avoids unexpected problem, problems for these stages. And, and not to mention, a lot of the times we're seeing uh, simulations being so valid that it's serving as a virtual prototype. and also reducing cost and time to market. And this also plays into the SOLIDWORKS integration with CST. You know, so now engineering teams can work faster, more efficient, uh, reducing cost and reducing time to market. That is it, that's the end of my presentation. I wanna thank you for your time.